Hey, um, uh, welcome to the Carabrash Mosaics and here today we are looking at the Logsodromes which are also known to us as um, Lamrines and a Lamrine is a curve that you know crosses each meridian at the same angle and uh, following a Lamrine and you know it's it's known that a Lamrine covers more distance than following a geodesic and for pirates or ship captains flying or sailing um, across a Lamrine will end up covering more distance and this is good for them because it keeps constant track of direction. Uh, in this task, um, as you can see on my screen, we will, uh, you know, uh, the assignment will give us some knowledge or experience dealing with coordinate systems and having a clear understanding of how ArcGIS draws linear features and hmm, perhaps a better appreciation for the dramatic differences between the logsodromes or the lamrines and the geodesics, which are the great psychopaths. Today we might not be looking at the geodesics, maybe that will come after this, but if we have some time, we're gonna do it. So um, you will notice in these all maps, from the screen you can see it's uh, not one, but a couple of them, uh, we are gonna use these grid lines. You can see I'm using Firefly grid lines. These are available in um, the living atras for the world. So, um, this sh should be the latitude and longitudes and they are fundamental in showcasing what we are doing here um, tonight. So, um, this assignment will include a number of tasks and I'm gonna include them at the footnote of this video or tutorial. So if you feel like, you know, you want to go through them back again on your own, please um, check out at the footnote and you're gonna see all these instructions. All right, so without further much ado, let's jump right in. And the first, um, you know, um, the first step that we need to undertake is prepare a data set that contains three cities of interest that are scattered about the globe. In my case, I have uh, the airports here, as you can see, and they are well scattered about the globe. I have uh, one from uh, Los Angeles International Airport, we have the Schiff Hall, and then one in Madagascar. And these cities or airports or points of interest should be at least 5,000 miles apart from each other and a large, you know, they should form a large triangular shape as you can see. Mm, they form kind of rough triangular shape and I will show you how to show if these distances are 5,000 miles apart from each other. And on map tab, go to share on the inquiry uh, set of options, there is the measure. So you're going to click on the measure distance tool, then change your parameters here to be in miles, and then um, make sure that it's planar because we're still on printer and that's fine. And then um, these two are gonna be activated. And then when your snap option is ticked on here, so it will, you know, uh, tell you when you light on top of that point. And that's the point that you're gonna click and measure distance from one of these points of interest to the other. So that's what I'm going to do here. So, uh, starting from Shefall to Tanana River in Madagascar, you can see it's 6,000, roughly more than um, what the least, uh, you know, distance apart from each other should be. So that is fine. And then let's see the other one. It's 8,000 miles. 
and then from uh, that is from Netherlands to uh, LA and then obviously from LA to Madagascar it's more than you know that quiet uh, distance so I'm gonna hit escape and exit out of the measure distance tool that was just to showcase I'll show you how you can you know make sure that you are above that least distance from these cities so um as I told you these should be um at very different longitudes and yeah you can tell they're on different longitudes and that's correct so I to do to get these uh, three points I went to the um, I added the you know the airports across the world and then I uh, opened the attribute table and then I had these three airports of target and then I went ahead and use the select tool here on the selection uh, set of options and then I went ahead and you know selected the three of them and then once you select them just go back to them and then right click go to data and then export the data set and then it's just gonna export the three options that you will have selected so once that is done then um I went ahead and symbolized them as you can see just go ahead and symbolize them the way you want them to you know uh, to feel so that is step one we're done with preparing a data set that contains three cities that are you know well scattered in a roughly triangular shape and in different longitudes so the next step was all is or should be preparing a second set of data set that contains three lines each consisting of only two endpoints and these lines should connect the three pairs of cities in the first data set and um, on this one we are going to uh, heavily rely on the snap options as I had mentioned earlier um, some few minutes ago and this is a very key uh, you know uh, option that we have here and we should set that on so and one other thing that I will really emphasize here is that the each you know um, these three lines each one of them should consist of only two endpoints and I'm gonna show you uh, how to achieve that so to create the three uh, lines connecting each pair of these cities, I went to my uh, database, which is Roxodromes and Geodesics. And that name was, um, is coming from the name of my map project. And then I right clicked and went to new. And then from this point, I went to create a new feature class. And after pointing these two new feature cards, um, it gives you this pop-up. So this is the place where I created the first one, line A. Uh, of course, uh, it should not have the spaces. So the alias is where you're gonna write line A name. And this is the name that gonna be displayed here. So once I created that, I made sure that it was a line and then I didn't do anything else, uh, I hit finish. So the same for line B and line C, and then I was done with that option. So once you uh, get these three of them, so you have the three lines that connect each pair of uh, your points of interest. And uh, once that step is done, I got my items in there and everything was all right. So going on, um, moving forward to the next step, which is step number three is, um, uh, you know, to make sure that, you know, wait, before we go to step number three, I said that I'm gonna show you how to make sure that each line has, um, has two end points and just only two add points. So to do that, once I created the lines, remember I had them in my database and then from this point, you have to go to edit option, 
once you create all the three lines so remember they, ju they are just gonna be displayed on your database here and then they will not be displayed here so you have to go back to edit and then start creating so you hit the create option here on the features here and then you're gonna be presented with the items that you have active on your catalog um, or content so go ahead and click the one that you start you, you want to start editing and that's what i'm going to do look at what we have here the options for editing so we have this one line with a point any point we have this other with more than one point we have this one that crosses each other but the option that you want to choose here is this one because remember we should have two points starting and adding point and this should be starting from the city or the point of your interest and then um for instance if i can show this to you so once you come here and uh you you know you start editing it's gonna if you have the snap option enabled so it's gonna sense that point and that's what you want to put your um cursor to start drawing so you draw from one uh airport or point of interest and then go to the next and then click finish and that's it so that's the um you know that's the same process that you're gonna do for all the other two and once you're done with that exit out of the edit mode by clicking on this uh cancel option and then remember to save all your changes i'm not going to do anything because i've already done that so once that is done um you can exit out of there and then we are good to go to the next uh, next step so and the that step uh, requires us to prepare a that data set that contains a dense and the word is dense roxodromic lines or lamb lines connecting each pair of cities so um you will need to set the data frame coordinate system to a projection that preserves logsodromic lines of the lamb lines as straight lines and this projection that i used was a uh, makita projection um at least because it preserves the lamb lines or the logsodromic lines as straight lines and i'm going to show you um in a minute so um and to achieve this we're gonna use a nacgs pro tool called densify geodesic well you can use the streaming tool to create these logsodromic lines that connect each pair of cities and um just to quickly kind of show you uh the densify tool i'm gonna come here so this is the uh tool it's called geodetic densify from the data management toolbox and this tool um you know it creates new features by replacing input features segments with densified approximations of geodesic segments and you can construct four types of geodesic segments but remember here we are creating the roxodrome so this is the option that we're gonna choose and um i will link these um you know help uh, help information for this tool down there so that you can you know make more reference about it so going back to um let me exit out of these we didn't all right so um once we're done with that we are going now to create these roxodromic so i'm going to my geoprocessing tool then i'm gonna search for geodetic uh densify so this is the name of the tool and alternatively you can get the help tool by clicking this question uh thing here so um and the input our input should be the lines that we have here because it should take inputs and one of these inputs should be you know uh, a rhino or a polygon that we already have here and these what goes in here is the uh, these lines that we created in the previous step so each at a time so that's all you're going to input there once you run that uh, make sure that the geodetic type is a rogues or drum here and then you're gonna give your name here and then this name was the one which was coming here which is rain a geodensifier just to kind of make sure that i'm keeping track of everything that i'm doing on my screen here 
So once you're done with that, make sure that, you know, I didn't change anything here. I just made, I left it at default. So because this is the default um, uh, distance that is set for the tool and I didn't alter anything here, um, get more help in the tool help, you know, that I'm gonna link down here. So I did the same for the second line, line A, uh, line B and line C. And once I, uh, and before running each one of them, I made sure that the output coordinate system was aligned that maintains or preserves the logs or drums as straight lines. Make sure that you do not, you know, forget this important step here. So I said I used Mercator projection because it preserves the roxodromes as straight lines. And once you set it here, um, you can click on this grow icon here. Uh, once you get this pop up, you can search for Mercator projection. Uh, is that the right name here? And then click search. And once you're here, go to the world option and then just choose the Mercator projection. That's it. Nothing. Uh, of complications this should be set for the environments and it should be done for each one of these lines line a line b line c and once you've done that you get the geodensified lines which are our rocks or drums here so you can see them um and then you know you can just summarize them differently to just kind of make sure that you know you know what is happening on your screen uh, well, uh, once we are done with these, uh, the next step gonna be, um, you know, right, experimenting uh, by changing the map projections. So here you you can kind of get, you know, exploratory, if I would say, and um, you know, there are thousands or hundreds or I don't know. Of projections so you can try each one of them and see um, what you get it's it's kind of enticing for you to get out there explore everything that is you know out there and see what all the projections produces for you so but for this exercise I chose four projections and um but you must have two of these so the first one is Mercator projection and you can see this is the projection that you know it's very formidable in the navigation world by the pirates by the sailing uh, captains it's 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 so crucial to them and it preserves them as straight lines because when you want to be moving from one place to the other you just want to make sure that you maintain that straight line when you're sailing or flying but to kind of demonstrate this, we need to use other projections and um, the projections that we're going to be using on the Mechaner, as I have mentioned, the Asmudo Equidistance Lamrine, as you can see, a stereographic line, uh, projection, the North Polar, but, you know, equidistant and wild from space. And we're going to be uh, throwing out ourselves, you know, throwing ourselves out there to see what we get. So we have everything set it's now for us to explore so we are done with the first one we can see that everything is maintained in um as straight lines in, in a mercator projection so let's go to uh as the projection um and you know let's change the uh projection here so I'm gonna right click on uh, the title of my map here and go to properties. Uh, once you're here, um, you know, go to the coordinate system and on the search bar, type in, um, sorry, as a uh, projection here. Click enter, then go to projection world then go to as mirror equidistance and and click OK. So you can uh, click on copy and modify and center these in one of your cities of interest by, you know, keying in the central meridian or long, uh, latitude of origin. You can play around with these. And once you do that, you know, click save and see what product you get out of that. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. I didn't, uh, I didn't change anything, so let's see. All right, so uh, you can see what we get here. And uh, in just a minute, you will see that our logs are drawn are curvy or um, changes once the projection changes. But the lines that we didn't geodensify still stay as straight lines. And these are very key for, for us to, you know, to kind of see, um, you know, how things should be. And the lamb lines are not, you know, they are not shorter distances. They're not like the, uh, the great circles of that. So from these, you can see uh, the reason why we needed to use the um, uh, the grid lines. Now you can see, you know, it brings everything into context. It brings everything to uh, home for you to understand and see what is really happening here. You can see uh, in these azimuthal equidistance, which is not, you know, we do not, we do not have a latitude of origin or that. You can see things of beauty. You can see. So, all right. So once on, um, uh, and as, as I mentioned, please play around with any projection that you would like. These were my choices, but make sure that you have a Mercator projection and a Nazmuthor um, projection. So, uh, you know, centered on one of your cities. And again, I'm going to include the instructions for you to follow along and maybe to be more clear on this. So next, um, on the next stage, we're going to be exploring the uh, stereographic projection. And again, to change the projection, you go to the name of your mirror, properties, and then we're going to search for stereo. You can just put it in um, search. It will give you the names with, you know, starting with such kind of character or something. So, I'm gonna, you can choose any, but I'm gonna go with a stereographic word and I'm gonna click ahead and go. So let's zoom in to our point of interest here and you can see. All right, it's, it's um, it, you know, gives you something which is more enticing to the array and gives you the idea of what happens with different projections and you can see it with your eyes and so cool all right you can see how the worlds are different and all the time the uh, the lines that are not logs or drums are straight and that's it so uh let's keep going on uh let's go to north pole um, but uh, equal as a middle equidistant projection and the same process again here so let's search for, oops, sorry, let's search for North Pole. Okay, and it's a projected coordinate. Let's go to the world option and, uh, okay. Oh, it should be in power, sorry. Okay, uh, it's North Pole run, but as a equal area. All right, and then uh, let's click enter. Then we can zoom in to our city. Zoom in. And then we'll also give some time for the Firefly grid lines to draw. And then we will see everything right there on our screen. Can someone say that this is not a beautiful thing for you to explore? Actually, it is very beautiful. You can see it. All right, and you can play around with any other projections like the spill house and all that. And, you know, finally we're gonna be exploring the world from space. And then um, one kind of cool thing or strange thing that I noted is that, um, well, it's, it's actually a cool thing. So, uh, and let, actually, let, let me show you here. So to change from world from space, see the same process. And I'm gonna search world from, then it's gonna take me right in there, then world from space and say, okay. So this is the thing. 
All right, so you can see this is not centered on what we want, but we need to do something else and maybe so that we can bring everything into context because we cannot see one side and to do that maybe we can go back just one more time then go back here and go to properties and search world um, from and let's go back there and then instead of clicking and just going let's right click and copy and modify to center these two maybe say negative 35.5 as the longitude of center then maybe call this be 12.5 and save so we are going ahead to favorite this one and say okay okay all right at least now we can see um we can see the two sides because we have centered it this one to kind of cool this place and we can see all these things that are drawing on our screen and i used custom like sort of grids here and you can see all the three cities and well this thing is so beautiful and you can play around with everything that we've been um like we've been talking about and you can see all our cities are right in here so uh and you know that the many things that you can try out with this one and um just to show that you know and this is the reason why the pirates will follow the lamb lines in uh, when they're frying or sailing for the captains that is and uh that is it so this is a cool thing that i felt that i you know I like talking about many things that i usually come across all you know things that i learned um a while ago and to bring life back to them i feel like you know i need to share them out with my uh audience or people who just want to listen to what i'm talking about here so thanks very much for um listening in and uh see you next time Right.